Yo, what's going on guys? Matt here and welcome to the Eastern Conference side of things. Today we are going over the NHL Metropolitan Division preview and this is a really good division guys. Before we get into it, again, these are my opinions, not yours. I'm going to continue to say that and um, if you are liking the series, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or something to say about your team in the comment section below, Please go ahead and comment if it is appropriate. I will definitely make sure to reply. So, like I said, this division is very, very good. Um, I think the bottom three teams that finished in the bottom three last year in this division will stay there. But the other five teams that uh, made the playoffs or at least came close to are going to be a lot better this year. And it's going to make it close. It's going to be a good race to the end. So, without further ado, here are my predictions for the Metropolitan Division for the 2015-16 to season. Starting things off, we have the Carolina Hurricanes. Last year was definitely a season to forget for them as they finished in last place, 8th place in the Metropolitan Division. They finished with the 5th overall pick in the draft, and they selected Noah Hannafin. So, I really like that pick, I really do. He's a great defenseman. The only thing is, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to come into this group right away. They have a lot of good young defensemen. Falk, Flurry, a couple of those guys, and um, I think he'd be better off just developing more instead of coming straight to the NHL because that's usually what needs to happen with defensemen that get drafted. They don't usually just jump in right away. They need some time. So MVP for them was Justin Falk. Um, I think he was second in their team behind Eric Stahl in points, and the reason I didn't say Eric Stahl is because Justin Falk is a very good young defenseman that they have. He's a very good young piece that they are going to build around in their def defensive core. And I think it was really important for him to have a good season like he did, putting up um, not a crazy amount of points because even Eric Stahl, the leader, didn't put up that many points. But at least he was second on his team in points. And, you know, for a defenseman, being second on your team in points uh, either means you're really good or your team's really bad. In this case, it was really bad. But don't worry, he still is good. He's definitely a key piece to move around. In the offseason, they did add Eddie Lack. I'm not sure if he's going to be the number one goaltender over Cam Ward. He will definitely put up a good fight for it. And they also brought in James Wisniewski. And uh, this is a decent offseason for them. Uh, got a little bit more of well-known players, I guess, because they have a lot of those um, players that are still developing. I still think that they're going to finish last um, at the end of this next season in the Metropolitan Division, but I do think that, you know, they're just going to be starting to develop, similar to the Arizona Coyotes in the Pacific Division. I think that they have boosted up their farm system a little bit, and it's still a couple years away um, from maybe thinking about a playoff spot for the Carolina Hurricanes. All right, next up we have the Columbus Blue Jackets, and if you could think of the absolute worst season you could possibly have for your team, the Columbus Blue Jackets basically had that season. They honestly had so many injuries they had so many different players coming in on different nights i think it was over 500 man games in injuries that they lost it was ridiculous and the best part about it for columbus blue jackets fans out of all that is that they finished with almost 90 points 89 and they finished with a winning record after losing all those players to injuries it's it's crazy to think about that they finished with the eighth overall pick but honestly the nhl is pretty competitive they were only like 10 points out from a playoff spot. So the Columbus Blue Jackets fans definitely have a lot to look forward to. Their MVP last season was Ryan Johansson. He was second in their team behind Nick Foligno in points. Um, Nick Foligno, the only reason I didn't pick him is because, yeah, he's the captain. He's their leader. But Ryan Johansson, that up-and-coming star, similar to Justin Falk with the Carolina Hurricanes, they really just needed him to have a good breakout season. They had a little bit of contract issues the season before. He comes back, plays the season, plays very well makes the all-star game and um, all that great stuff. So it's really good to see him develop into a nice young forward. Um, I'd say a top six, possibly a top three forward for the Blue Jackets at this point. And um, I think you could say it's top three. And honestly, they didn't need to do much in the offseason. They just made sure they needed to make sure that their players did not get injured next season. And they went out and got Brandon Saad from the Chicago Blackhawks. They had to give up Artem Anisimov, but I think... Um, you know, Chicago had to give up Saad to them, and they only had to get back um, Anisimov. So for Chicago, it was good. They got a decent player back. But for the Blue Jackets, I think they won this trade. Chicago really couldn't win any trade because they were under the cap limit. But um, they get Brandon Saad back. He is definitely a top-line forward. He could probably play with Ryan Johansson and Nick Foligno, possibly. We'll, we'll see, though. Uh, Gregory Campbell, just a depth forward there. He'll probably go on the fourth line for them. Um, but I do have them finishing at third in the Metropolitan Division next year. I think they're going to make the jump. They're going to come back to the playoffs. The year before, they made the playoffs. Um, but, yeah, I, I honestly, I, I, I'm not sure. I feel like the Blue Jackets, 
could have done so much better last year, and I think even without the offseason they have, they would be pushing for probably a wild card spot. This year, I think that they are a bubble team, but I think that they do get in. I think they get into that last spot in the top three for the division. I think they finish third. I think they come and make the playoffs with Brandon Saad, Ryan Johansson, Nick Foligno. I think it's going to be a good season for them as long as everyone stays healthy. If they don't, then they could have a very similar season to last. But if everyone stays healthy, if Bobrovsky plays well in Nets, then they can have a very good season and could make the return to the playoffs. Moving on forward, we have the New Jersey Devils, and last year was not a great season either for them as they finished 7 in the Metropolitan Division after it was all said and done. They finished with a top 10 pick, they selected the sniper, Pavel Zaka, and um, really are just looking forward to next season. Their MVP I chose was Corey Schneider. He didn't even put up that great of numbers, but I really just thought that he needed to be that guy, because after Martin Brodeur retired, that battle became... Um, Corey Schneider's, he won it, and he became the number one goalie. He needed to stay healthy. He needed to play decent, at least, because his team does not have a great offense, and they really did play. He did play decent, and I think that was important to them, and I think that he can be their number one goaltender moving on forward. They just have to build around him. Off-season-wise, it was okay. They brought in Kyle Palmieri, and they also brought in John Moore, a um, defense. So, honestly, I don't think next year they're going to be competing, to be completely honest with you. They just need more of an identity on offense. They have Adam Henrique, who was good in 2012 when they went to the cup final and lost. Um, they have Patrick Eliash, obviously. But ever since the loss of Zach Parise and Ilya Kovalchuk, they just have not been the same. They did bring in Zaka. I don't know if he's going to make the roster or not next year. But uh, either way, they just need some identity on offense. They don't have really that score that really, when you think of the Devils, you think of that guy. Because it used to be Kovalchuk and Parise, but it's not anymore. So... They just need to fill in and get a better score. I don't think they're going to be competing this year. Um, I would expect them, I put them at 7th in the Metropolitan Division. I would ex um, expect them somewhere towards the bottom and not really competing for a playoff spot. I don't think really they're going to be a bubble team either. I don't think they're going to be playing meaningful, meaningful games in March. I think it's going to be over by then. And it's going to be a disappointing season for the Devils fans. They're definitely going to need to um, get something going. They're going to have a shot at Austin Matthews most likely next year. And... We'll see, though. It's going to be a tough season for the Devils Nation. They just need that big-time score. Corey Schneider is looking better, but when it's all said and done, it's going to be a tough one. Next up, we have the New York Islanders, and it was a pretty good season for them last year. They made their return to the playoffs with over 100 points. They faced the Capitals in Round 1, but they really probably wish that they had home ice advantage as the last game of the season they lost and gave the home ice advantage to the Washington Capitals, who they faced in the playoffs, and... Of course, it went to Game 7, Capitals had the home ice advantage and beat the Islanders. So, if you're an Islanders fan, you definitely probably wished that you guys had home ice for Game 7 at the Coliseum, but you did not. This is actually the only prediction I got wrong in my playoff prediction for last year's playoffs. I had the Islanders over the Caps, but it was the other way around. This year, though, they go over to Brooklyn in their new arena, the Barclays Center, and it's going to be cool seeing them in that new arena. Obviously, the Coliseum um, is going to be a something that they will remember forever but moving on they have to uh, go to a new arena which is good they needed it Coliseum was not that great and moving on to the MVP John Tavares led them in pretty much all categories he's their captain he's their leader I think he's establishing himself as a top five elite forward in this league and also really um, when they drafted him in 2009 I think they really wanted him to be this type of player and that's exactly what he was so Really helping out this team. He's a great captain. He puts up a lot of points. And this team is really good. I am a little concerned that they didn't really try to add anything else to go to that next level in the offseason. But uh, they felt pretty confident in their team. And I think they're right. I think they have a very good team. I think they could probably make that next step. They did add Thomas Grice to back up Yaroslav Halak. But it's really important that they did get Yaroslav Halak during the offseason. Because they finally have that number one goaltender. Rick DiPietro is a bust. Evgeny Nabokov was old. All those guys are gone now. They have a number one for sure. Yaroslav Halak. Played pretty well last year and led them to the playoffs, so if he can do that again, they'll be in good shape. I have them finishing at second in the Metropolitan Division. I think they're going to make that next step, get past the first round. I think it's going to be a good year in New York, or actually Brooklyn now, for the Islanders and their fans. And I think they will make it to the playoffs, go past the second round, and possibly have a chance of making the Conference Finals, or maybe even the Stanley Cup Finals.
Now we have the President's Trophy winners, the New York Rangers, and it was a pretty good season for them. They didn't go back to the Stanley Cup final like they did in 2014 where they lost to the Kings, but they did make it all the way to Game 7 in the Eastern Conference Final against the Lightning last year. It was a bit of a disappointment that they did not win it, but uh, you know, it was still overall a pretty good year for them, and they really um, added a little bit here and there. They did lose Carl Hagelin in the offseason, but uh, I thought they had a pretty good team. Their MVP last year was Rick Nash, and he didn't play that well in the playoffs. He did decent. He had a couple goals here and there, but um, in the regular season, he played very well, and I think that's important for them because sometimes there was, you know, at some points there was questions about Rick Nash. Can he perform? And he really did in the regular season. So that is exactly what they needed. Like I said, in the offseason, they did lose Carl Hagelin, but they did bring in Emerson Edom. I think he's developing into a pretty good forward, probably a middle six forward for them. And he can uh, help them with depth or maybe even a little bit more than that. They also brought in Antti Ranta as they did ship off Ken Talbot, their backup goaltender, to the Edmonton Oilers. And they're bringing in Antti to back up the King Hendrik Lundqvist. And I guess you really wouldn't need a backup goaltender much in New York. Maybe a couple games here and there because Lundqvist plays most of the games there. But like we saw last year, if he gets injured and you need a goaltender to step up, can't tell, but definitely did. And Tiranto is going to be that man now. So he's the backup goaltender for them. They really, like I said, um, with the Islanders, didn't need to change much. They are a very good team. I see them finishing first again in the Metropolitan Division. They could win the uh, President's Trophy again. They really could. And it's going to be another good year for the Rangers. Maybe they can get back to the finals. I think they have a good chance to. Um... I think really anything less than an Eastern Conference Final for them is going to be a bust of a season. And I think even for some fans, they really want to get back to that Cup Final and possibly win it. But we will see. I have them finishing first, like I said. Possibly can win the President's Trophy. Didn't need to do much in the offseason. They did a little, but it will, I think, help in their depth areas. And it's going to be a good season in New York. Next up, we have the Philadelphia Flyers. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I feel like all three bottom teams in 6th, 7th, and 8th place the Flyers, Devils, and Hurricanes are going to stay there this year. Last year was a not-so-great season for the Flyers. It was kind of a disappointment. Maybe there were some expectations. They weren't too high, but they didn't make the playoffs. They finished with the top 10 pick, and I picked their MVP, though, to be Jakub Voracek. Him and Claude Giroux were leading the way, but I think, really, he had a breakout season. Uh, they signed him to a contract in the offseason, and um, really, him and, and Giroux and even Simmons are going to lead the way. We'll see, though. In the offseason, they did bring in Sam Gagne and Michael Neuverth to back up now instead of Ray Emery for Steve Mason. And I think it's going to be a similar season for the Flyers. I don't see them getting into the playoffs. I see them, you know, not being awful. I don't think they're going to be awful. But I do think that um, maybe they're a bubble team, but I feel like they're on the verge of not even being a bubble team. I feel like they're definitely not going to make the playoffs. Maybe they can surprise some people. Sam Gagne has some skill. Um, you could argue that he's been with Edmonton and Arizona, so he wasn't able to bring out his full potential. Who knows? Maybe he'll be a star forward for the Flyers alongside Voracek and Giroux, but you never know. I feel like they will not make the playoffs this next season. I feel like they're going to be around the same as last year, which is why I put them at sixth in the Metropolitan Division. And I feel like the players on their team just really aren't good enough for the type of type of game that they're going to be facing. Um, I feel like next year is going to be a year where they get a little bit closer, but I feel like they're a year or maybe two away from coming back to the playoffs and being very good. Um, but a couple additions do help. I think they finished sixth, and it's going to be another draft pick year for the Philadelphia Flyers. And we move over to the other side of Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we find the Penguins. They finished fourth in the Metropolitan Division last year. They did make the playoffs just barely on the last day of the season, and they did not do very well in the playoffs to the Rangers. I guess you can argue that every game was a one-goal game, I believe, but uh, still, they lost in five, and that's all that matters. So really just another questioning year in Pittsburgh. They had the Cup Finals in 08 and 09, where they won in 09, but ever since then, they just have not been the same. Their MVP of last year, I put Sidney Crosby, not just because, oh, it's Sidney Crosby. I really put him because he's a very important piece of their team, obviously. Um, probably one of the best players in the NHL, if not the best. And if he's not playing well, if he's getting injured, then they're not going to do well. Last year, he played most of their games. He led their team in points, was top uh, two in the league. I think he was second place or even first place. I don't know. He was top in the league for points. And it was good to see him stay healthy where years past he wasn't. And it's just good to see him 
leading his team. The only thing I have with them is their depth. They try to, um, to help it out, at least, in the offseason with their new additions. They bring in, obviously, the biggest one, Phil Kessel from the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's going to help in their top two lines. I don't know if he's going to play with Crosby or Malkin. We'll see, though. And Nick Bonino, he's going to add some speed. They got him in the Brandon Sutter trade from the Vancouver Canucks. And also Eric Fair. And I think these guys will help with the depth. They definitely do. I still see them finishing fourth, though, next year in the Metropolitan Division. I'm sure some people will get mad because they had a pretty good offseason, but so did a couple of other teams around them. The Rangers are still good. The Islanders... I think are the only team they're a little bit questionable here I think they have a good enough team to stop to stay in the top three finish second I put them and then the Blue Jackets had a very good offseason especially bringing in Brandon Saad so I think the Penguins did good I think they're gonna get better I think they will make the wild card I think they will make the wild card as a number four team just like they did last year so I'm pretty sure they'll make the playoffs um, especially after the offseason they had I think the only reason they don't get into the top three though is because of the other teams around them getting better. So I think if you're a Pittsburgh Penguins fan, it's going to be a good season next year. I think better than the last one if Fleury plays well and stuff like that. But they did get Phil. He's going to help in the top six. Nick Bonino, probably a third liner. He'll help. And um, all around their depth did help. But again, teams around them just got a little better. I'm pretty sure they'll make the playoffs as a fourth seed in a wild card spots. Hopefully, though, they won't have to go against the Rangers or another team in possibly the Atlantic Division. But again, if you're a Pittsburgh Penguin fan, look forward to the playoffs next year. I'm pretty sure they're going to make it after a good off season. And the last team we're going to talk about today are the Washington Capitals. And yes, if you see the projected finish, don't be alarmed. I will explain everything. Just let me go through it. Last year, they finished second in the Metropolitan. A pretty good year for them. Um, I didn't see them doing that well. I thought maybe a wild card. But they did sweep into the top three and actually beat out the Islanders for home ice and played them in the first rounds. They beat them in the first round, moved to the second round where they had the New York Rangers backs against the wall. They were up 3-1 in the series with three games to play. They just had to win one more to get to the third round against the Tampa Bay Lightning, and they lost all three of them, and the Rangers moved on. So, um, not that I expected the Capitals to make it to the third round, but uh, you know, after winning three games and only having to win one more the next three, you think they'd be able to do it, but in past years, they haven't been able to either, and that trend continued this season. So, MVP of last season, I picked Alexander Ovechkin, very similar to the Sidney Crosby pick. It's not just because, oh, he's Alexander Ovechkin and he's always their MVP. No, it's because he's a very important piece to this team. Last year, or actually the year before, he had some defensive troubles, and this year, he got a little bit better with that. His scoring came back, and... He had a very good season for them, and that's very important. If he's not doing well, then the Capitals aren't doing well. So that's why I picked him as their MVP. In the offseason, they did pretty well. They picked up TJ Oshie from that Troy Brower trade with the Blues, and they also got Justin Williams. Now, I was going around figuring out what the Capitals did this offseason just to make sure I got the two key ones, and the Capitals website really just seemed to be obsessing over Justin Williams. As a Sharks fan, playing the Kings multiple times a year, Justin Williams is good. He's a good, like, second, maybe third liner, good middle six forward. But he's really only super effective when he's in the playoffs. Until then, he's not that effective, and he's really not going to help him too much in the regular season. You might see him pop up if they make the playoffs, but he's not as good as everyone makes him seem to be because that's only in the playoffs. And in the regular season, he'll chip in here and there. But uh, I just don't see why he is... He's a good addition, but he's not an amazing addition like these Capitals um, analysts are saying. So basically what I'm saying is that he's good, but uh, he's not going to make that much of a difference. And TJ Oshie is also good. I think he's a little better than Troy Brower. So I think they get a little better in that sense. But I still think they're looking for that one more piece to help them get over that hump. Last year they finished second, but they could have easily finished third. And this year I think they will probably make the playoffs. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be like the Central Division last year in the Western Conference. Both the 4th and 5th seeds made the Wild Card team. I think the Penguins and the Capitals will both make the playoffs next year. But I think the Capitals fall down to the last Wild Card spot, which is a shame because they're going to have to face a top-seeded uh, team in the Eastern Conference. But uh, you never know. I think they're just missing that one more piece still, maybe a little bit more depth. They have some younger forwards, but uh, they still need some more depth. Um, but I think if they get over that hump, with some additions maybe towards the trade deadline or something they can get there don't get me wrong i think the capitals make the playoffs as a second card or second wild card team but i think they are still missing that one last piece which is why i had them finishing fifth in the metropolitan division all right so when it's all said and done this metropolitan division is pretty good the bottom three teams the 
Hurricanes, the Devils, and the Flyers, I think, will remain there. But everybody else is getting better. And I think that's why it's a very, very tough division for each of those teams this next season. It could go a couple different ways. I'm pretty confident in my picks, though. I think, like I said, the Penguins and the Capitals, both who are going to finish 4th and 5th, at least in my predictions, will still make the playoffs as a wild card team. And I think that uh, it's going to be a pretty good year in this division. It should be pretty competitive up there towards the top in um, spots 5 through 1. And it uh, will be good for most of those teams, aside from the Flyers, Hurricanes, and Devils fans. They still are a couple years away. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a good season next year and I hope you guys enjoy it again if you have any comments about your team that I went over today disagreeing if they're appropriate I will definitely reply to them and I will get back tomorrow we will be going over the Atlantic division that will be the last preview before the season starts training camp here starts in a couple of weeks look forward to that make sure to subscribe and as always peace